Welcome you all back. A big topic today, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, a developmental and behavioral disorder causing difficulties at home, at school, and at work if it's not recognized and treated. And we've got some fascinating statistics here. Yes, yeah, studies show that many children are affected uh, between 1.5 and 2.4 million children here in the United States. The disorder is most often diagnosed in boys. Some of those children grow up to be adults living with ADD. Now from 60 to 90 percent of school-aged children with ADD are treated mm -hmm. with stimulant medication for a prolonged period of time. We're talking about Ritalin. It is the most common medical treatment with over two million American children on this, mostly boys. Can you believe that? 60 to 90 yeah. percent? Okay, so it seems like these diagnoses are popping up all over the place. Being diagnosed whether you're a child or an adult with ADD or ADHD, automatically you're put on drugs. We have some special guests here with mm -hmm. us today because earlier this month we asked you to take our online poll on what matters to you and ADHD was at the top of the list. This is from you. So today we have therapist Jane Fendelman back with us, author of Raising Humane Beings. You remember her well. And then Heather Ross, one of her clients and Kaylee isn't this this is interesting absolutely now <laughs> let's talk about your story and and really how Jane has changed your life as a parent when it comes to ADHD it has changed my whole life her I have her book here and I read it from cover to cover and I have all these little markers of the things that have really worked very well the yes after you um, and let's explain that because what's interesting when you read the book, this really is changing the way you feel about yourself as That's a woman. Right. deficit hyperactivity disorder, a developmental and behavioral disorder causing difficulties at home, at school, and at work if it's not recognized and treated. And we've got some fascinating statistics here. Yes, yeah, studies show that many children are affected uh, between 1.5 and 2.4 million children here in the United States. The disorder is most often diagnosed in boys. Some of those children grow up to be adults living with ADD. Now from 60 to 90 percent of school-aged children with ADD are treated Mm -hmm. with stimulant medication for a prolonged period of time. We're talking about Ritalin. It is the most common medical treatment with over two million American children on this, mostly boys. Can you believe that? 60 to 90 yeah. percent? Okay, so it seems like these diagnoses are popping up all over the place. Being diagnosed whether you're a child or an adult with ADD or ADHD, automatically you're put on drugs. We have some special guests here with mm -hmm. us today because earlier this month we asked you to take our online poll on what matters to you and ADHD was at the top of the list. This is from you. So today we have therapist Jane Fendelman back with us, author of Raising Humane Beings. Do you remember her well? And then Heather Ross, one of for clients and Kaylee isn't this this is interesting absolutely now <laughs> let's talk about your story and and really how Jane has changed your life as a parent when it comes to ADHD it has changed my whole life her I have her book here and I read it from cover to cover and I have all these little markers of the things that have really worked very well the yes after you um, and let's explain that because what's interesting when you read the book, this really is changing the way you feel about yourself as That's a woman. Right. As and in turn, parent. you're, yeah, as a parent, and in turn, you're treated differently by the kids. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are doing so much better. But what was your greatest struggle? Describe just and real quickly what it was like at home with your kids. It, it, everything was a challenge. Um, everything from getting up to uh, getting breakfast to getting off to school. And the same. Defiance? Nonstop defiance? Oh, yes. I don't want to, I don't want to eat, I don't want this, I don't want to do that. All the normal stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the way back down to homework and chores and, mm -hmm. and I don't want to go to sleep. And When did you start seeing the first changes? After seeing... The first so changes, I, when I took them off of medication mm -hmm. and changed their complete diet of everything that they eat. We, I'm at home more now with them and using the yes after you She's being kind of modest. Jane, okay. She she went out there, Jane. When she came back for her second for her second session, between her first and second session, Heather had already. What I'm always saying is, we have to do what we're we have to be willing to do what we're asking our children to do. We have mm. to be willing to change. Mm. And Heather went home, and right after the first session, she started to changing the way that she handles her children, handles situations, and because she didn't come in with a headbutting yeah. um, mentality, like, okay, I have to make you, I have to control you, I have to mold you, I have to form you, I have to tell you, I have to steer you, she came in more with, uh, right after her first, I think, right after your first oh, session, yeah. you came in with the attitude of, 
okay, what can I do to reward their good behavior mm. and avoid punishing? Because punishing, I can tell you, always brings a payback. Wow. And that's what Heather was living, the paybacks. Every day. Help me understand <laughs> what yes after you means. Explain that. Dr. The yes after you is instead of saying, clean up your room, clean up your room. I told you to clean up your room. Why are you not? You're oh no gosh, TV until like you me. clean up your room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it a, lot of us. a lot of us. Yeah. In, instead of saying that, because that's the, that's our knee-jerk response. That's what our parents did. That's so what we do. And the easy way, it's the easy way is the hard way, and the hard way is the easy way. So the hard way is to change. Instead of saying clean up your room twice, because anything more than once is called nagging. Hmm. Instead, we come in and we say, I have a surprise for you. You told them to clean up the room, and they don't, right? Okay. So you say, I have a surprise for you. Do you want a surprise? And they say yes. And you say, okay right after you're done cleaning up your room, come and get me, and I will give you a big surprise. And they don't know if it's going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh card or a hug and a kiss and I love you, I'm proud of you, or you get to pick where we're going for dinner. It doesn't have to be a thing. I know your parents don't want to bribe. It's wrong to bribe. Maybe it's okay to bribe. I mean, aren't we paying you money to go to work? Your job is important. You should do it for free. There so, you go. So Heather, Heather was like, when Heather said she would come today, I was like, you are. She's Leaps and bounds. Give, us, give us another technique that changed the way your house was run. I stopped yelling at them. Oh the my gosh, did I you hear that? She stopped yelling at her kids. That's How many weird. of you yell at your kids? That's Let's fess up. Yeah. It's huge. It okay. was a huge. So what do you do in place of yelling at your kids? I calmly talk to them. I calmly ask them to do. I use the yes after you. I give them reward. I give them praise for all the things that they're doing. Because what would they do? When you yell, they do. They, they yell back. Yeah. Or they get uncomfortable and they're like, oh, come on. I don't want Wall to hear that. Up. We all do I that as human beings. And the self-esteem goes down. Sure. When you exactly. get yelled at, it's hurtful. Wow. Yelling, wow. there's a chapter in my book. Well, it's not a chapter. It's a paragraph. I don't know. I haven't read it in a long time. Yelling is hitting with words. That's Yelling what it is, says. Hitting, Yelling with is words? hitting with words. Yeah, which I don't know no. if the husbands buy into that so much. But come on over, <laughs> no, kids. No, the husbands are hard to Kaylee, convince. you want to introduce us? This is a, this, they're 10, and how old is your daughter? Six. And six. Now, what's your name? Christian. Hold Christian. on, I'm going to squeeze over here. We're about the same height. It's Christian? Mm-hmm. How old are you? 10. Okay, and you're six? Yeah. What's your name? Haley. Haley and Christian, is, okay. Is the house different? Is your mommy different? Yeah. If, are things going better? Yeah. You're not taking your medicine anymore. Mm -mm. Do you what's, feel better? Mm -hmm. What's the change? What's it feel like for you? What did it feel like before and what's it feel like now? Not eating now. It feels like eating more. Interesting. Eating more. Eating more. He's grown so much. He, he, his friends and talks and um, they kind of were like zombies when they were on medication. They were very um, <laughs> closed down and they would play not by so not together by themselves they would go in in their own rooms and just, just the personality. Yeah. and this is what jane you're all about you want to get the kids mm -hmm. off ritalin get them on mm -hmm. good healthy foods mm -hmm. and get the family talking again without medication exactly and you say that this really works and you're living proof of this That's you right. all are and parenting style that is about inspiration and reward and not so much about punishment and control can i have a quick uh, those of you here for adhd in the audience raise your hand okay do you think this stuff might work for you all right, we're going to see if we can take some questions. When we come back here, Jane, back with us. Thanks to all of you. Yeah, good job, you guys. So Thanks. much. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stand up. I want to see how tall you are. Oh, yeah. You're taller than me. Good job. I welcome you all back and therapist Jane Fendelman talking about curing ADD, ADHD without drugs. And before we take questions from the audience, I want to go through some of these tips because I think this is awesome. Use inspiration and reward, not punishment and control. Exactly. Never repeat, you mentioned. Guilt is a waste of time. Do an act of amends and ask for forgiveness. Explain that. That's because a lot of behaviors coming from the children are unconsciously to punish us because we feel guilty. I had a parent once, I had a father who felt like his former alcoholism had driven away his wife and he felt very guilty that his daughter's mother, his teenage daughter's mother, was gone now. And so every time he picked her up from school, no matter what he did, he always wound up showing up late. And so, and she would cuss him a blue streak. She would get in the car and start cussing him up and down. She was 17. And I asked him, tell me what you feel so guilty about. And he said, how do you know I feel guilty? And I said, because you have some setup with your daughter. You need to just make them out. If you feel guilty about something, say it out loud, apologize for it and ask them what you need to do. To, to set the scales of justice back into balance. That is good, because boy, I know we feel badly about not spending enough time with the kids or whatever the case yes. may be. And Okay, let's take a first question from the audience, Kaylee. All right, this is Joy. Joy, what's your question? 
Um, the question that I had was that the doctors were trying to start my son on Ritalin um, due to his poor grades in school, lack of attention in class, and also the mood swings. So I just had a couple questions on what other uh, issues there might be that we could work with besides the meds. Joy, how old was he again? Uh, he's eight. He's eight, okay. So you all know, nod your heads how many have a right, right around eight years old. And they're starting to talk about drugging them and everything. So that's a real common age and he's a boy. Um, for a lot of children, there's a line in my book that goes, the person with the greatest attachment has the least power. So if your child's grades and schoolwork is more important to you than it is to them, guess who has all the power? But if your child is inspired, feeling inspired by their teacher and loved by their teacher and feeling rewarded, then they're going to do better in school. And also if you say, instead of saying, get in there and do your homework, if you say, use the yes after you. I have a, a special treat for you right after you get your homework done. And the younger they are, the closer together the rewards are. Because the, uh, um, you know, to a child, uh, an hour, to a little child, an hour is like, like training a week. an animal, that whole Pavlovian response association. Exactly, exactly. So, and for yes. the mood swings, for the yeah. mood swings, I ask families, they have a family motto invite all emotions. Because one of the things mm. we think we're supposed to do as a parent right. is to control their emotions. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, the more you try mm -hmm. to suppress a person's emotions, the more they grow, the bigger they get, and the more um, inappropriately they will come out. So, if your child is having a strong expression of emotion and you just say, wow, I'm gonna, just going to sit down. What if your husband said to you, don't, have the women ever experienced a, a man saying, honey, you're overreacting? <laughs> <laughs> Has that ever worked to calm you down? No, it's like gasoline on the fire. What's he thinking? So the same for children. Women and children are emotional creatures. And so if, if your husband said to you... Oh, I like that. Listen, L women yeah. and children Women and are children emotional are emo creatures. We're emotional creatures. And if your husband or your man sat down and said, you know what, baby, I can see you're mad. Let it out. You're gorgeous when you're angry. You would just be like, oh, I like, and, and then it would. I love that. There it goes. Let's take one more question. Yeah, we have a question from Cynthia. I'm going to buzz around here. <laughs> All right, Cynthia, what is your question? My question is, with my son, he doesn't sleep all the way through the night, he, and he bumps his head when he does. He's very talkative in school, and sometimes he, he battles low self-esteem when you try and tell him not to do things. Yes. So I need help with that. Yes. Okay, that's so great. Thank you for that question, Cynthia, because it's so important. It's really, it really is our knee-jerk reaction to say, don't do things. Stop that. Don't do this. Do this. And when we use the yes after you, it kind of clears that up. But two things that you said that I think are definitely entwined, and that is low self-esteem and inability to sleep. Because, you know, one of the signs of depression is difficulty falling asleep. Mm -hmm. And when we have low self-esteem, our tendency is going to be that we're depressed. And I think that when he, you're, first of all, I want to say hats off to all of you, because mm -hmm. parents, you, you already get an A, all of you, because We're parents trying. who want to find out mm -hmm. a new way of being with your children, you're already my favorite people in the world. So when you go home today, you're going to bite your tongue every time you want to tell him don't. And instead, you're going to say, honey, as soon as you're finished hitting your brother, come in the kitchen. I have a surprise for you. <laughs> so you're going to be rewarding him for good behavior and pretty much ignoring bad behavior. Not that you don't ever set boundaries, you do. But when you set boundaries, you're saying, that hurts my feelings or that's not okay with me. Instead of saying, you're lazy or you're mean, we say, I'm, you know, that I like this. I like, you know, this hurts my feelings. Does that make Bring sense? It back so to it you. stays positive. Does that help? Oh, us? and Cynthia, you said he talks in school. Got and about 20 seconds left. School is a social place. Mm -hmm. School is, remember on the, the first show we were talking about what if I gave you taxes to do all day? You didn't choose it. I'm not going to pay you for it. Whatever you don't get done, you have to do after school, and you're going to do it for 12 years. So children didn't choose school, and a lot of children are lonely, and I always say the magic cure is presence. Uh. So if you get eyeball to eyeball with your children and just shine your love on them, and, and you've got to remember, it's one of the most important thing, as a parent, what do you want to be remembered for? Ooh, that's When you're good. old and you're getting ready to cross mm -hmm. over, how do you want your children to remember you? As the person who always said, did your homework, did your homework? No, I, I am so glad that you okay, said you. this point, because I wanted to reiterate that before we go to break here. Shine your love on your children without directing or controlling. Don't just do something. Stand there. Presence is the magic cure. That's right. Quantity. Quantity time versus even quality? Quality. Quality. You've got to have quality. Qu but you have, you have quantity You have too. to have some quantity. If you don't have at least a half an hour of just time to relax Hanging and just out. observe your child, a half an hour every day. If you don't have a half an hour every day, 
your child's going to have trouble. Did you hear that? Time where you're Did not you controlling that? or directing. And if you've got three kids, you're talking about individual one on one time with each of them. It can be, that would be or ideal. Or sharing, that, maybe throughout the week, dates with your kids kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. This is huge, you guys. I hope this helps so much. Oh, I love it. I, where's the book? I got to show here. Here, get it, get it. It's really easy to read, and even just read the first three chapters, and you're going to be hooked, okay? Raising Humane Beings. Jane Fendelman, thank you. Thank you so and much. And thanks to Tracy. everybody in the audience today. Plus size, girlfriends, a store dedicated just for you at 945, a place to find elegant, stylish, comfortable clothes for big, beautiful women. But first, if you've ever wondered how food servers handle disruptive and cheap guests, this answer will shock you. We'll be back in a moment.